Mm, we were talking yesterday about citizen-centric uh, data collection, which to me, um, I'm very passionate about it. Because when we talk about ICT and ICT indicators, ICT is actually about people, okay? It is about human being. It is about their behavior. It is about their satisfaction, about their needs, concerns, and interests. So I thought that if we are the statisticians, the planners and decision makers, we need to really tap the mind of the people in order for us to know exactly how do they feel about what they get from ICT. Are they okay? Are they not? Even though we feel like the penetration rate in certain areas with regards to broadband, for example, we must get down to the people and talk to them to get their inputs and feedback. Are they satisfied? Are there no drop calls? We are talking about uh, a good penetration. Oh, everywhere is okay, it's very strong, but actually on the ground, we don't really know whether the people are satisfied with the delivery or the service delivery that we have provided. So the reason for citizen-centric is just that, it's very simple, you must go to the site. You must see the behavioral styles, the lifestyles of the people. We should be able to know exactly the specific needs and the problems that they are facing so that we should be able to offer the best solution for them. And at the same time, we are able to make the best policy for them, because at the end of the day, it is all about them. Crowdsourcing is quite a new uh, emerging uh, element in, in Malaysia, but it has been in the literature everywhere. Uh, some of them talk about crowdsourcing, some talk about crowdfunding. Again, the word that is used is about people. Pr crowd is actually people. So what we want from crowdsourcing is just this. For example, in Malaysia, we take uh, Connecting the Unconnected. That is one of the programs that we are now implementing. We went into the remote areas. We did not go and give them solution. But we go, we crowdsource from them, we get their inputs, we tap on their minds, because as I said, and I will say it again, that the mind on the margin should not be marginalized. They are the mind that actually will give us and offer us a lot of solutions to the problem that they are facing. All right, for that, I feel like, okay, farmers, farmers in the rural areas, they have got middlemen or middlewomen who came to them and make them like feel okay, I need to plant this tree, uh, strawberry, for example, but I don't know what do I do with this strawberry other than making it into jam. But they said I would like to turn it into cream, face cream for cosmetic use, or I want to do some other products uh, for, uh, f to, to be marketed. All right, then now. What we do is that we sat down with them we call it crowdsourcing to get their inputs. Okay, when you do this, will you be happy? Yes, we'll be happy. How many of you are going to do this? How many women? How many men? How are you going to do it? And we intervene to make their life easier. At the same time, we match them with the industry. So there will be no more middle men or middle women that will take advantage of them. So that is the kind of crowdsourcing that we have. There are many, many more connecting the unconnected mind. Mind is our Malaysia inclusive digital nation. That is another program that we have where we really sit down with them and ask them and we bring in all the telcos, all the industries, the NGOs, and we sit down with them. We talk to them to know what exactly do you want? So it is more of a demand driven. It is not supply driven that the government will always impose on the people. You do this and you do that. And we are so remote from them. We don't know their problems and we do not, do not actually recognize their experience. So now we do go to them and we reach out for them, sit with them at their doorsteps 
and then get the solutions out of them. I call it social inclusion. I call it uh, uh, inclusive innovation, where the innovation actually comes out of the people on the ground. Uh, now they call it the B40 people. All of us know that actually women are 50%, if not more than that. I think, I guess we are, we are really, uh, the percentage of women is on the increase, 50% of the world population and 50% of the population of any other countries all over the world. They are the best asset. That's why people used to say, if you educate a man, you educate a person. But if you educate a woman, you educate a nation, and I love that. And what I was talking about gender dis disaggregated is because the impact of development is so uneven on certain societies, let alone regions and countries all over the world. So the most prominent one is the gender gap, and in the context of ICT is the digital gender gap, with which I think is still huge between male and females. So, by giving them the digital inclusion, if I may say it so, digital inclusion meaning that you empower a woman with ICT. So with the empowerment, women actually should be able to have more opportunities in socio-economic and change their life. ICT can make a lot of difference, but if we do not gender segregate, the data between what is the impact on male, what is the impact on female, then it is going to be very difficult for us, the policymakers, to make sure that we give the solution to the right problem. Because for women, the problem is not now. For women, the problem was a historical disadvantage, if I may say it. It is a structural problem, systemic at times. So we really need to make sure that women are there because without women, any nation will fail in their development and the development is actually meant for everyone. So that's why we always say gender equality is always very, very important and I'm all for it.